Welcome to the first race truck talk. Welcome to the Czech Pre. And with me here is Theo Kalvi, Adam Lachko, and Norbert Kisch. A very warm welcome to you. Norbert, just already in your racing suit still because you had not any time to change because lots of fans wanted to have your autograph, of course. But let's talk about the second race of the Saturday. Um, yes. And officially right now is that you were ranked third because due to a penalty of 10 seconds. How did that happen? Yeah, in the last lap I had a little bit of contact with, with Andre Kursim and um, I don't think it was too bad. I think it was okay. Um, but but the, the stewards think that it deserved a penalty. So I, I, I received a 10 second penalty which puts me back to third position. And, uh, and Theo up to second actually. So, uh, you know, it happens sometimes in track racing. It's... There's always a lot of small contacts like this and, you know, sometimes you get a penalty, sometimes you get away with it. Mm -hmm. And we've got the new system on board, Smart Witness, and this is why, of course, it's like a video assistant referee in football, if you want to compare it. So this is why we can check everything. But you are the profiteur, <laughs> Theo. <laughs> Congratulations. What are your thoughts about uh, the, your second place? Yeah, uh, in my, on my side, I start uh, the race uh, at the first position, on pole position. Um, I just missed my start because uh, my wheel spun, so it can happen sometimes. And yes, I kept my third place uh, during all the race. Fair, no, I was second, then uh, Norby overtook me. And uh, yeah, he was penalized. Uh, I'm sorry for him. It's good for me because I made my first second place in the TRC Championship. So yes, I'm very happy. But the first beer is on you right now for Norbert, I think. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And also, also um, I made two, two first places in the Goodyear Cup, so that's also good for me. Yes, of course, it's really uh, an exciting weekend for you. And for Adam Latsko, you're both racing for the Bugliera team, which is now racing on home soil, obviously. Yes. What do you think about the first day today? I think uh, it's not bad. We have uh, some problem because we try to make a good setup for today weather. Today weather is like uh, April. <laughs> sometimes raining, sometimes sunshine and sometimes nothing. But the circuit is uh, somewhere wet, somewhere dry. We see on the Super Bowl. It's very funny because half circuit is uh, completely wet and uh, many drivers, also me, go out because there is a river on the, on the tarmac and it's not possible to turn. And second half it's like nothing, sunshine and uh, everybody asks what doing there on the back by you coming with a small damage on the front and I say yeah there is raining like hell. And, and we try to make a setup but uh, it's not really good. But I think uh, on the first, on the main race, it's good for me and for team. I finish on the third position. It's good for a home race. And the second race, uh, we have a problem with uh, clutch and front axle. But I hope uh, we arrange for tomorrow and we make better results for tomorrow. Yes, and as you said, and Norbert, I still got your quote in my mind. This qualifying was epic. I mean, yeah. this is something you did not experience quite often. Yeah, no, exactly. Uh, well, I, I was just explaining to, to some people that I raced for 15 years now, or, or 16 actually. And I, I never had such a, a, a big contrast in the, in the circuit, you know, that one half is like really, really flooded and the other half of the circuit is, is completely dry. And, uh, and then, yeah, we had the red flag, but then when they let us back out and, and let us continue the, the Super Bowl, we had six minutes left, which was good enough for two fast laps, and the circuit was still the same. So it was it was very tricky condition, but actually it was, I, you know, I loved it. Uh, well, I obviously I loved it because I ended up in the first place, but uh, it was still such a unique thing. I mean, on, on, such a, on a normal side circuit, this, this don't really happen often. On some place like the Nordschleife, or Le Mans or whatever it can happen when you have a, a 20 or 25 kilometer circuit, then it can happen. Uh, but in a, in, a, in a normal size circuit like most here, it's, uh, it's really rare. So yeah, it was quite a unique Super Bowl and uh, it was, yeah, it was a great experience. As you said, you are really experienced and we want to get to know the drivers a little bit more. You're the double champion of 2014 and 15, and you led the championship last year, but due to the pandemic it was cancelled and so there was no title given. Um, what are your, uh, your 
what is your way in truck racing? How would you describe it? What is your passion about truck racing? Well, you know, it's um, it's really it's really unique, you know, to drive these such huge machines with huge power. I mean, like this 5,000, 6,000 newton meters of torque and over 1,000 horsepower rear wheel drive is, is one thing I really like that, uh, you know, touring cars are nice and everything, but front wheel drive is such a boring thing, you know, and it's it's not not, not so much, not not, uh, not much fun to drive. You know, it's, it's, it's more of a struggle, let's say. Uh, but to drive a real, such a powerful rear wheel drive car is, is so nice. And, and here in track racing, we have all these things that I like. And, um, and I think the, the, the weekends are really nice that we have four races on a, on, a, on, a, on a weekend and two qualifyings because we are on the circuit quite a lot. We do a lot of laps. We have the reverse grid race, which is always very, very exciting. So, you know, it's just a combination of things that makes this championship very exciting for the driver. So you, you are 20 years old and obviously successful in truck racing. What does it mean to you to be such a, let's call it, young gun in truck racing sports? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, you know, I start I start uh, racing really uh, really late uh, compared to the others. Um, I started re the uh, truck racing because I never I did nothing before uh, at 16 uh, in the French Championship. Um, I'm still now in the French Championship. I make uh, the European and truck uh, and French um, Championship. But uh, yeah, I don't know. It's uh, you know I'm here. To learn, and uh, I want to be at the top uh, as fast as possible. You were the youngest driver ever to stand on the FIA ETRC podium, uh, Nurburgring 2018. Was it? Uh, what was that for experience for you? Yeah, that's true. Uh, it was uh, in the Grammer Cup, the old, uh, the old category. The old Goodyear Cup, let's say. Yeah, old Goodyear Cup. Uh, yeah, it was. Uh, for me, uh, a dream because first it was uh, at the Nurburgring, so the, for me, uh, the biggest event in truck racing. And uh, yeah, now to be uh, here in the on the podium in Most is also good for, for, for the team, for, for me, uh, for the mental and everything. And I hope uh, years after years I will be like Adam and Norby, for example. <laughs> Team Bagheera means you, Tio Kave, and also Aliyah College. We shall not forget her second female driver right now, alongside of Adam Latsko. So you're the experienced one, not the old one, of course. But <laughs> how is it for you? <laughs> of course. Uh, how is it for you competing with those young uh, drivers? Yeah, but uh, Teo, it's my colleague in, in team, and Aliyah also. And I'm also starting when I have uh, 18 in truck racing. And it's uh, very funny, on the first season when I start in uh, Red Bull Ring, I, maybe it's the second race and I stay on the podium uh, the, many years ago. And I'm racing with uh, Tatra and, and this is super race track, it's much more power than today. And it's also, I'm very happy and this is the uh, reason why I'm happy, because Theo stay today on the podium and at home for us, for the Bagheera and he, he make very good progress and uh, I think it's perfect. That sounds really good. You've got experience in GT and touring car as well. What makes the difference for you, truck racing? Oh, it's big different. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody asks, but uh, when you adjust for, for a truck, you, you love it. And there is different with the brakes, uh, with the power, with the balance of the weight, with everything. And I remember the year 2000, I think, six. I, I do GT1, GT3, truck racing, and WTCC in one season. And this is a very hard season because uh, every time you change the car and truck, and uh, I have a big uh, mesh in my head because you must very fast adjust and after you try to make the best result. And it's not bad, but I think it's better when you concentrate only for one category. Uh, so you, you are nodding, I think. <laughs> what is it for you? How, how long do you need entering your race truck to adjust yourself during race weekend? Oh, it's difficult to say. Um, obviously, I think that the two free practices that we have on, on Friday usually is very important for this, uh, you know, to get back in the rhythm, especially when we have such a long uh, pause like this summer break what we had uh, since the Hungaroring um, because it's um, yeah it, it can be challenging you know to 
to feel the brakes again. The brakes are quite different because we have the air brake system, which is quite a lot different than what you have in your street car and in other race cars. So it's uh, probably, I think that I'd say that's the most difficult thing to get used to. So yeah, I mean, the, the two 20 minutes free or 30 minutes free practice is good. I think we need that. Probably everybody needs that. And it's also interesting. Those are the trucks, obviously, for the road haulage systems as well. So it's uh, you're racing the truck because lots of people asking me, are they special race trucks? Of course, they're just they're adjustments, but the how do you say the body itself is. Uh, those bodies and those models, let's say it, uh, that you can see on the street. Of course, the adjustments a lot to do, but yeah, this is also one part that I, I love about track racing that the, the parts, the cabins, and and the axles, and you know the brakes, and a lot of things you can find on the street, but not in this combination, you know. And uh, and it's really good that you can make a lot of things, you know, with the springs and uh, and and the. Uh, and the geometry of the, of the steering and, and you know everything. So you have quite a lot of um, space for development and ideas. Because, uh, yeah, what we get from MAN is, is the engine itself. The rest is, is built by the team. And I think uh, with, the, with the Bagheera guys even, I think they build the engine themselves. You know, at least we can, we can rent the engine from MAN so we don't have to care about the engine. But the rest, you know, the chassis and the steering and the suspension and the cabin and, and every, every system, you have to figure out yourself. And, and, and have to build it yourself. You cannot go to MAN or, or Iveco and whatever that you want to buy a race truck. There is no race truck for sale. You have to build it yourself. How is it at the Bagheera team? Yeah, we make, like I say, Norby, we made everything. We make uh, engine and all, like Norby say, the chassis and all systems, electric, uh, air, water system, everything uh, the engineers must be thinking about this, how it's possible do on the truck and another side it's uh, you think something is good but in a theoretical way <laughs> when you do practically you find ah it's not possible <laughs> yeah this is uh, many times we thinking about something is good and after when you try it's not good and this is devel developing and uh, when we must also concentrate for the engine it's much harder Tia, how do you communicate with the engineers <coughs> Um, uh, it depends during the race or if it's during the race uh, we have a, a radio um, we can communicate with the team and everybody uh, it's very helpful because uh, when you have a problem or something like that you can say directly to the team and uh, they can try to help you and uh, also for time practice or things like that uh, when they, they say they uh, ask you if you are okay, you feel good and everything, and you, you can uh, ask them the time. So yeah, that's very good to, to communicate. Uh, and uh, when we are in the paddock or something, we just uh, talk each other, uh, work on the data and everything. So yeah, I think uh, engineers are very important in the team. <laughs> yes, of course, everybody on the team is very important. So this is the season 2021. Last year was cancelled due to the pandemic. So what are your aims right now for this season? Oh, uh, well, I think uh, we started this season with a good momentum again. We had a technical problem where we lost a victory in, in Hungary and lost quite a lot of points. But um, we are still quite close to the lead, I think. And uh, yeah, I, I hope that we can keep this momentum up in the in the coming races and fight for victories and in the end fight for the championship. It would be really nice to win the championship, but it's never easy. What are you going to say, Adam, to your goals of the season? Everybody would like to uh, win the season. Everybody would like to uh, catch uh, the title. And it's not so easy. Last year we raced only two races weekend. And this year we hope we finish the and other weekends, what we have in the plan. And I hope uh, I stay on the podium. We've got the championship and we got the Goodyear Cup, Theo. <laughs> yeah, on my side, uh, I want to be champion in the Goodyear Cup, of course, and uh, take uh, the maximum experience, uh, I, uh, experience I can. Um, I'm doing the, the French championship, like I said, and uh, I really want the, the title. Um, and yeah, in Europe, I really want to take experience and win the Goodyear Cup, of course.
Sounds pretty good to me. Thank you very much. That was the first race truck talk here from the Czech Republic, from the Autodrome in Must, and we hope to see you soon. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you very much.